In this med mastery lesson, we will learn to identify sonographic features of focal median nerve entrapment and recognize other lesions mimicking carpal tunnel syndrome. Before we do that, let's look at some important structures of the wrist. The pisiform is an important carpal bone that is used as a bony landmark to identify the median nerve in the carpal tunnel. Within the carpal tunnel, there are 10 structures, 9 tendons that we learned about in Chapter 2, and the median nerve. This is a transverse view of the median nerve on ultrasound. Let's compare it to our diagram. We can visualize many of these structures, including the pisiform bony landmark on the right, the ulnar artery, and the ulnar nerve to the left of the pisiform, the flexocarpi radialis tendon to the left of the image, the pomaris longus tendon, and finally, the median nerve in the center. Let's locate the median nerve in the carpal tunnel region. We place the probe in transverse orientation and locate the bony landmark of pisiform. On the right, we can see the pisiform bone. On the left, we see the scaphoid. Once we identify the pisiform bone, we try to define and identify flexor retinaculum, which is seen as a hypoechoic band just above the carpal tunnel structures. Just under the flexor retinaculum, we can see the median nerve showing the honeycomb appearance. One of the tips that we can use to differentiate median nerve from the carpal tunnel tenons is by fanning the probe. In one fanning direction, the tenons become dark. In other fanning direction, they become bright. But the nerve stays relatively hypoechoic. Also note that the nerve is showing honeycomb pattern here. Once we localize the nerve, we can rotate the probe to go long on the nerve, as we are doing now. You can see the nerve is hypoechoic relative to the tendons. Tendons are showing hyperechoic fibrillar echotexture, and nerve shows as a hypoechoic band with alternating hypo and hyperechoic texture. Once the median nerve is localized, we measure the cross sectional area of the nerve at the level of pisiform. The cross-sectional area should measure equal or less than 0 0.09 cm square. Here we have a normal transverse image of the median nerve. We measure the cross-sectional area to be under 0 0.09 cm square. If there is focal neuropathy of the median nerve at the wrist, we will observe a hypoechoic signal in the nerve, an enlarged cross-sectional area of greater than 0 0.09 cm square, and physical constriction or hourglass deformity. Let's look at some examples of median neuropathy on ultrasound. This transverse view of median nerve shows a hypoechoic swollen nerve. The cross-sectional area is double the size of the normal range at 0.19 cm square. In the longitudinal view of the median nerve, note the focal constriction or narrowing of the median nerve at the site of entrapment. It is also important to examine the surrounding soft tissue structures to look for possible space-occupying lesions that may mimic carpal tunnel syndrome or median neuropathy. These include flexor tenosynovitis, ganglion cysts in the carpal tunnel, and other space-occupying lesions. Let's look at some examples of lesions mimicking carpal tunnel syndrome. This transverse image of the median nerve in the carpal tunnel shows an anechoic cystic mass in the carpal tunnel compressing the median nerve. This transverse image of the carpal tunnel shows swelling of the flexor tendons of the wrist with positive color Doppler sign indicating hyperemia. This appearance is consistent with tenosynovitis. Swelling of the tendons leads to an increase in the carpal tunnel volume, putting pressure on the nerve. 